WWE wrestlers who had theme songs that didn't fit their character. Number 10, Yoshitatsu. Even though Yoshitatsu was over with his happy-go-lucky babyface act, it was time for a change by the time WWE got to 2011. During Yoshi's feud with Tyson Kidd on the game show format of NXT, he would debut a new, much more serious persona. This persona would see him debut a new look and a new theme song. To match this new persona, it was vital that WWE work to create a memorable theme and it needed to perfectly capture what Tatsu's new persona was all about. Unfortunately, WWE completely butchered this. Things started off promising as a new theme started with a new intro that had a legitimate feel to it. You have another thing. Then, for whatever reason, the new theme awkwardly cut to Tatsu's old theme that literally sounded like a dance track. The new character was just dead on arrival. Number 9, Eric Young. Our fans were elated when Eric Young showed up in NXT. Young was one of the standout talents in TNA, and over his celebrated tenure in the company, Young portrayed various roles. Young was able to deliver both serious and comedic roles, and he managed to excel in these over several years. Due to his versatility, WWE fans had high hopes for Young, as in theory, they could throw the former TNA World Champion into any role, and he'd be able to deliver the goods. Young would debut in May of 2016, confronting former TNA star and current NXT champion Samoa Joe. Whilst it was great to see Young finally in the WWE, his initial theme did a huge disservice to his presentation. The theme song was the definition of generic, and it didn't exactly portray to the audience that Young was a main event star that they should actually care about. Thankfully, they would eventually alter the theme song for Young's full-time run in the company, and the second theme song was a considerable improvement. Number 8, Billy Kidman. It's a common consensus that Billy Kidman had one of the most underrated themes in WWE. Kidman would debut his popular theme song at the 2002 Survivor Series, and it was instantly established as one of the most popular theme songs of the Ruthless Aggression era. Whilst fans still rave about the theme song today, the song ultimately didn't remotely fit Kidman's character, both as a heel and as a babyface. The song even had some disturbing lyrics, such as... All of a sudden you start in the bell sleepy, but in the streets when you doze off, you wake up with your clothes off, the shame feeling so lost, whoa. And it continued. Now, it doesn't take a genius to work out what these questionable lyrics are implying, and it's baffling to think that the WWE approved of this song for a babyface. Number 7, Drew McIntyre. Upon making his full-time debut on the main roster, WWE let the audience know that Drew McIntyre was a big deal. Vince McMahon would handpick McIntyre both on and off screen to be the future face of the company, and it's well established that McIntyre wasn't quite ready for this type of role in the company. Nevertheless, WWE did the right thing by starting McIntyre off in the mid-card. His in-ring work was passable, yet his character and presentation were lacking in any substance. McIntyre's first theme song certainly wasn't helping things, as it was generic and flat and didn't represent the young prodigy that WWE were portraying. Drew McIntyre! Well, a golden opportunity tonight for the chosen one. The infamous theme song would be used for one of the biggest nights of McIntyre's career, that being the 2009 TLC pay-per-view. At this pay-per-view, McIntyre would defeat John Morrison to become Intercontinental Champion. Thankfully, WWE would eventually discover the perfect theme song for him as he would begin to use the track known as Broken Dreams. It's not hyperbole to say that this is one of the greatest theme songs of all time and WWE hit a home run in finding a theme song that was the right fit for him. It's hardly a surprise that fans are still clamoring to see the theme song make a return as it's still insanely popular with the WWE audience. Number 6, Triple H. By late 1997, Triple H had ditched the Blue Blood gimmick in favor of the DX persona. These gimmicks were a stark contrast, yet even still, WWE was still having the game users Hunter Hearst Helmsley theme, Ode to Joy. Triple H would come to the ring on the October 27th, 1997 edition of Raw to face Goldust, and Triple H was in full DX mode. The game would come to the ring with Shawn Michaels and China, and it was almost as if WWE had accidentally played the wrong theme song, as it didn't remotely fit. The Generation X, and if anything, they are becoming more degenerate with every week here on Raw, JR. They quickly learned that this theme song wasn't going to work, so Triple H would eventually come out to the popular DX theme, and the classical theme would be retired forever. Number 5, Evolution. 
Evolution are well known for being one of the most successful stables of all time, yet it took some time for WWE to perfect their presentation. When the group would begin to use a collective theme song in the summer of 2003, they didn't have the line in the sand out of the recording studio, so instead they used a track known as Evolve. Evolve basically had the beats of Line in the Sand without the lyrics, and when it came to this particular song, the lyrics make all the difference. The interesting thing about this song is that this song was officially considered to be Randy Orton's second theme, and was even used for Orton for his appearance on the Raw 2 video game release. Thankfully, the Line in the Sand song would soon surface, and this was the ideal soundtrack to represent the definitive stable of the Ruthless Aggression Era. Number 4. The B Team the B-Team are an often forgotten about tag team and they're mostly known for their association with The Miz and for having an elite theme song. Their initial theme song was titled Battle Scars and to say this song was outstanding is an understatement. The song was tailor-made for a main eventer and unfortunately it didn't fit the vibe that Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel were going for. WWE decided to ditch their theme song insanely quick and the duo were quickly given a new theme song that failed to stand out. In a disappointing move, WWE never decided to reuse the song. The song was perfection in terms of being ready made for a huge name, yet WWE just retired the song completely. Now that song is several years old and it would be welcomed if they reintroduced the song for a wrestler as it could seriously take the presentation of the right wrestler to the next level. Number 3, Samoa Joe The buzz surrounding Samoa Joe's WWE debut was insane, and when he eventually debuted in late 2015, all anyone could focus on was the horrendous theme song that they'd given him. The first few notes were great, and then the song went off into a crazy direction with bizarre music that didn't fit anyone on the roster, never mind someone with as much star power as Samoa Joe. The theme was scolded by fans online, with some even saying that it ruined his debut. Eventually, WWE would edit the theme song, and his second theme was a vast improvement. According to Joe himself, during an appearance on Busted Open Radio, he worked with the producers as a second theme to get it just right. Number 2. Randy Orton This Fire Burns is mostly known for being the first WWE theme song for CM Punk. The theme song is so popular that, as things stand, the WWE release of the track on Spotify has over 100 million streams. It's common knowledge that before Punk used the theme song, they would attempt to make it Randy Orton's new primary theme. Orton debuted the song on a random episode of SmackDown in 2006, and although the song was epic as ever, it just didn't fit Orton in any way. Welcome back to our nation's capital, the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. A big night. Credit should be offered to WWE for trying something new, but this was Punk's theme, and it was hard to imagine anyone else on the roster using that theme song. And number one, Roman Reigns. When Roman Reigns returned to WWE as a heel in 2020, everything about his persona and presentation changed. Reigns was now a legitimate villain on the roster, and all the nonsensical, borderline, childish aspect of his babyface act were dead and buried. Reigns would debut a new attire and he would expand his moveset, yet there was one thing that was holding Reigns back, and that was his theme song. Reigns was still using his babyface theme song that he'd been using since 2014, and it wasn't suitable for him as a heel. WWE were aware of this, and they got work on a new theme for Reigns, and this would eventually debut in 2021, and this reception was overwhelmingly positive. The song captured the essence of the head of the table persona, and it's widely regarded as the finest work of Def Rebel. But there you have it folks, WWE wrestlers who had theme songs that didn't fit their character. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.